what's a foolproof way of testing out any new grill? Burgers. That's right. Today, I'm out in the cold making burgers two different ways on my Yoder Smoker YS640S. So, let's go. What's up? My name is Ben and welcome back to Impossibly Kosher. I'm gonna be making some burgers on my Yoder Smoker YS640S. If you don't know what a Yoder is, check out this video. I go ahead and explain what the YS640S is, pellet grills, unboxing, setup, the whole nine yards. Now I mentioned, I'm gonna be cooking these burgers two different ways. The first one, smoked at a low temp and then grilled off. The second, grilled off, no time to smoke. Now make sure to watch the whole video through. I'm gonna be sharing throughout the video different tips and feedback. And at the end, I'm gonna give you guys my thoughts on the Yoder Smoker and the cooking experience. So first things first, we gotta get the smoker going. And the first thing you wanna do is always make sure you have enough pellets in the pellet hopper. Making sure that the pellet hopper is full because there's nothing worse than in the middle of a cook or towards the end, you get a burnout. A burnout means the fire burns out and you have no more heat source to finish off your cook. It's freezing here with lots of snow. So the pellet cooker is gonna be using more pellets to keep that fire and that temp constant. So we wanna make sure that it has a comfortable amount of pellets. Next, you wanna make sure that your firebox or your ash box is cleaned out of all the debris or ash from the last cook. What's nice about the odor, just take it and smack it on the side. And that way you can clean out the full cooker at a later point, maybe after three or four cooks. Next, power it up, set it to 250. Like I mentioned, a lower temperature. That way we'll be able to infuse way more smoke into the meat itself. Pellets will right away start to be fed with the auger into the firebox. Then after a minute, the ceramic igniter will ignite those pellets. On any pellet cooker, you're gonna wanna make sure to keep the hood or the lid open while it's igniting. I like to wait until I see the fire. Then I add back the hood, close the lid, and let it come up to temp. While it is, let's prep our burgers. Traditionally, when I'm grilling up some burgers, I like to keep it simple. Salt, pepper, don't manipulate the meat too much, and put them directly onto the grill. Today, I was going through quite a few cooks, so I wanted to prep a little bit in advance. So, in a bowl, got the meat, added in the salt and pepper, a bit of garlic powder, and gave it a nice mix. Then I formed three different types of patties. I made three thick ones that will be smoked, three thinner ones that will be grilled directly, and I had some leftover ground beef, so I made some kiftas, which are great for babies, easy to grab onto, easy to eat. They smell quite nice, ready to be cooked, but we're only gonna be smoking the thicker ones, so the rest go into the fridge. The yoder is at 250, time to get the meat on. Since I have two levels, my thought process and where I want my meat to sit is on the top left. Top because, well, it's further away from the direct heat, and on the top rack because the smoke rises, so my thinking is it's gonna be hit with more smoke, get more smoke flavor. Next, I get in one of the internal probes, set it right in, and set it up for an internal temp of 115 degrees Fahrenheit. Close the hood, and now we just go and monitor the cook from my phone. Once they come up to temp, they should look something like this. A nice reddish color on them. Now I get them out onto a plate in the house where it's nice and warm, and they're gonna rest for no more than five minutes, where they will sit while I get the grill up in temp. So one of the nice things on the YS640S is the next step. I take off the grill grates, I remove the hood, and crank up the temperature to 500 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, it's gonna start feeding way more pellets to bring that temp way up, and you're gonna get direct grilling. I put the grill grates back, close the hood, and let it come up the temp for another 10 or 15 minutes. Let's take a look in the app to see how it's doing. As soon as I up the temp, you can see it's jumping like crazy. Every two seconds, it's jumping at least 10 degrees, 15 degrees. That's because so many pellets are being fed in, uh, the fire is getting stronger and, well, more fire, more heat. Now, because this is going to be direct grilling and the hood is gone, the meat is going to be exposed directly to the flames. So it's sitting right above fire. So it's going to be way hotter than 500 degrees. Let's open that hood. Take a look at that fire blazing. That's exactly what you want when grilling. Now we get all our burgers and our kiftas and we get them directly on to the grill. You can see which ones were smoked by that red color. So when grilling direct, you can grill them with the hood open, with the hood closed, it makes no difference. Now keep an eye on them. I like to flip my burgers regularly. I don't like to have those square marks on there. I don't like to burn them. So flip them regularly. After a couple of minutes flipping regularly, you're gonna have this beautiful sear, a beautiful color on them. Just take a look. And now the difference between the smoked and unsmoked really, really pops. Finally, time to take the burgers out. 
and power down. Now let's take a quick look at them before I run inside for the taste test. Oh my gosh, they're juicy as heck. They smell incredible. Oh, and the neighbors are eyeing me the whole time. Nobody grills or smokes in the winter like I do. So I took them out. I like honestly to taste meat when there's nothing else with it. So I can actually taste the flavor that's been imparted to it or what's been infused. So I have here the red one that has been smoked and you can see the color and here the one that's just been grilled. All right. Let's just take a cut down the middle. It's dripping juices. It's unbelievable. Give it a little taste. I'm gonna save my feedback for the end. Make the grilled one. Both very flavorful. The smoked one has an incredible extra something that really beats the, the normal one. The only thing I would have done differently is I would have added a little bit uh, higher ratio of fat in these burgers. This is Costco meat, so it was, I think, 70-30. I like mine juicier and fattier, but honestly, they are impeccable. Salt, pepper, garlic powder, simple. We're gonna eat them right away, and that's it. So now, let's go through final thoughts. First things first, here's a few quick tips when using your pellet grill. Whenever you get your new pellet grill, make sure to do the initial burn-in, and the seasoning before cooking anything else. That's the video that I linked in the beginning. I'll leave it, another link in the description section. The burn-in is very important to get off any residual oils or dust or anything that was left on during the manufacturing process, which will make your grill or your cooker safe to use and well, to cook on. Seasoning will help prolong its life and prevent rust. So if you have a cooker that may be prone to rust, like the Yoders, seasoning is critical and will help prevent that rusting but it's good practice no matter your grill. Critical tip number two, when starting up a pellet grill, make sure to keep your hood completely open while it's igniting. Once you start to see smoke, personally, I like to wait until I see the fire itself, then you can close the lid and let it come up to temp. Tip number three, do not listen to anybody when they tell you that on every grill, it's the same for heat zones. Every grill is different, brand to brand, cooker to cooker. You can have the same pellet grill as somebody else and have two different heat zones. The theory behind the different zones remains the same, but the only way to know really what zones run hotter or colder is to test them all out yourself. Test them out with burgers, with chicken, with fish, with beef, whatever it is. Tip number four, which is something I referenced a little bit earlier, don't manipulate your meat too much when making burgers. You actually wanna salt them right before they're hitting the grill. What ends up happening when you mix salt into the mixture or put it on before is it starts to pull out the moisture. You want your burgers to be as juicy as possible. So right before they hit the grill or the smoker or whatever it is, then you can add in the salt. Just a little tip for you. Cooking tip number five, if you wanna get more smoke flavor into whatever meat you're cooking, get it into the fridge or the freezer about 10 minutes before you're gonna cook. That way it takes longer to come up the temp. The longer it's in the cooker at a lower temperature, the more smoke flavor it will absorb. Now, let's talk about the YS 640S. In the unboxing video, I promised that I would do a full review in this video. Well, I partially lied. Sorry about that. I'm only gonna be reviewing the parts that I used and that I played with so far. The first point is the time that it takes to come up to 10. As you can see from the graph, it took just shy of like 20 minutes to come up to 225. That's pretty fast. Personally, that was quite impressive. When I'm using my Weber kettle, it can take up to 30 minutes to come up to 10, and then 10 to 20 minutes to regulate and keep constant. So that 20 minute warm up was quite awesome. Next, how did it hold the temp? Honestly, it held it pretty well. Look, you can see that it barely went over 250, and when it did, it was for short periods of time. That's what's nice about the Yoder pellet grills is that it's really good at maintaining and keeping temperatures in whatever zone that you're aiming for. Now something that a lot of people overlook is the little probe hole that uh, your internal probe will go through. It helps that it has this little metal cover which blocks as much airflow coming out from outside into the cooker which could screw around with the temperatures. So that's a really cool little feature. Next, the heat retention. When everything is nice and warm outside, it's relatively easy for a cooker to keep the temperatures constant. 
but when it's freezing cold and full of snow, that's when it gets really impressive. So when I cranked up the temperature, it took five minutes to bring it up from 250 to 500 degrees. Five minutes, that's it. That gave the perfect amount of time for the burgers to rest, but not enough time for them to cool down too much. Next, the direct grilling. Something that's really cool on the YS640S is the ability to do either low and slow, from I think it's 175 or 150 degrees, I don't remember what's the, the lowest it can go, all the way up to five, 600 degrees Fahrenheit. And then when you're direct grilling and you remove the hood, you're directly above a blazing flame, so it gets way, way hotter. So you end up having the best of both world of direct grilling and smoking. So that feature I absolutely love. You remove the hood, it's very, very convenient. Next, the taste. The smoke was burning blue and clean, which is a nice, nice change. When you're doing lower smokes, you can get dirtier smoke, which is that white, thick cloud. Now that will give more smoke flavor to your meat, but it could end up having a little bit of a, a bitter taste to it. The telegrill, I didn't experience that with the burgers, which was quite nice. And the overall feedback, I'm quite impressed so far. It's a tank of a unit, and it feels like I'm gonna be needing way more cooks to do a proper and full review. So that's exactly what I'm gonna to do to give you guys the full experience of the Yoder. I'm gonna be making sauces, I'm gonna be making breads, I'm gonna be making you know, cobblers or apple pies, steaks of course, and briskets and chicken, fish. I'm gonna be making everything all over the grill so that I can explain to you guys my experience with my Yoder smoker. And after each video, I'm gonna add my little review for you guys. So make sure to subscribe to the channel, ring the bell so that you're notified whenever a new one comes out. All right, guys, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.